We're talking about dying while flying. As you know, every year, two billion people take airplane flights. 300 million take long distance airplane flights. Well, what's the risk of having problems when you're flying? There are several things that can happen. Aside from, of course, the disasters of a plane crashing, the bigger issue becomes what is the impact on our health. So the most common things one would worry about while going in an airplane are things like communicable diseases. Somebody has a cough or a cold that could get communicated to you. Other things are things such as jet lag. Amongst the more worrisome things that we worry about are things called DVTs, which are deep vein thrombosis, put simply a blood clot. Well, the CDC in the United States looked at this and they actually find that an average person like you and me have a risk of about 0.1% of having a blood clot. But when you're flying, the risk goes as high as 0.5%. And some of these blood clots can move to different parts of your lungs called a PE or a pulmonary embolism. These can be fatal. Now, has there been any case that has ever been documented of somebody dying from a blood clot that he suffered during a flight? No. But there have been several people who have been diagnosed as having had a blood clot, having had a pulmonary embolism, but that did not lead to dying. Nonetheless, what can we do to prevent this from happening? several reasons for this. Some of the more common reasons that predispose us to developing this are our own lifestyle habits. So those of us who are more obese, those of us who are more than 40, in fact even higher if we're more than 65, issues such as not having had enough fluids, issues such as being still for the majority of your flight, all these factors have impacts. Amongst the other things that are of importance are the fact that do you have a clotting problem? Going on to decide what to do to prevent blood clots is quite simple. Some of the best things to do are make sure that every two hours you walk around in the airplane. Keep yourself well hydrated. Try to take an aisle seat because it allows you more flexibility both in moving around in the aisle as well as to move your legs. These are only some of the things that you should look at. Ninety percent of blood clots can be prevented by stockings, but if you look at the latest guidelines in the journal Chest in the ninth edition, you'll find that stockings are only recommended for patients who have a higher risk factor of developing blood clots. But in the average healthy person, there is no data to show that there's a benefit of wearing these stockings. What about things such as should I fly economy versus business? Well, once again, there are no studies that show that one is better than the other. The timing with which it typically presents will be anywhere from within the flight itself to up to four weeks. During that time, what you would develop would be symptoms such as pain in the calf. You develop some swelling some point of redness or warmth on the leg. And if this blood clot in the leg were to progress further up to your lungs, you would develop th things such as difficulty in breathing, some pain in the chest, especially when you're taking a deep breath. And of course, you can have an episode of blacking out and worst, of course, would be dying. Other questions that are asked often in this context are, should I take an aspirin? Should I take blood thinners? Well. There's no role that aspirin or blood thinners have been shown to preventing blood clots in the common person. So the next time you catch me flying, you'll probably see me walking around in the airplane, you'll see me drinking a lot of fluids, not drinking alcohol, and of course, trying to see if I can find an aisle seat. One of the things that you might also see me doing is wearing a compression stockings depending on how my risk factor profile sets in. But that would be important for you to discuss with your physician as to your profile. Happy flying.